Hi DIYers, Sterling with Alarm Grid here and today we're going to show you how to install a 5800PIR-RES wireless motion detector into our Honeywell wireless Lyric security system. So the 5800PIR-RES is a 5800 series sensor. That means it's a traditional uh, Honeywell wireless product, okay? It is not a six series sensor, which is what the Lyric system uh, is designed to be used with. However, Honeywell's made the Lyric to be backwards compatible so that it will work with all of the traditional popular Honeywell wireless devices. So if you have an existing Honeywell wireless system, whether it's a Vista panel with a receiver uh, or a Lynx Touch or Lynx Plus all-in-one wireless system, all of the sensors you have in the house now will continue to work with the Lyric system. They just won't be encrypted to the system and bi-directional to the system like a six series sensor would be. So we wanna to demonstrate to you how you can still use the 5800 series sensors and we're gonna show you how easy it is to pair or learn in a device like this to our Lyric panel. So anytime we wanna add a zone to the panel, we have to get into installer level programming. And if you've watched our video on the difference between installer and master code programming, you know that you have to use the installer code to access the programming of the panel. Uh, this screen, you can kind of ignore this step. If your system is set up for monitoring, you won't see this screen. Basically, every Lyric system expects to be used with monitoring. And so when you first access programming, it wants to associate associate itself with a account in the cloud at Honeywell servers. In this case, we haven't yet associated this for monitoring, so we're just gonna say no to kind of skip past that screen. So if you're getting that screen, it means you're not yet active for monitoring, and just ignore all the parts about AlarmNet 360 for, for now. Once you get monitoring, your company that you ch choose to sign up with will help you with that configuration. Once you're here, you hit program, and on programming, you hit zones to program a zone. And just like with most Honeywell systems, uh, you have some template zones shelled out uh, right out of the box. So front door on three, back door on four, window on five, motion sensor on six. That's the same traditional style of a three, one, and one. Three windows or door sensors, one motion, and a key fob. So we expect the Lyric will be sold in that kind of traditional package, the same way the Lynx Touches have. And that's why they have these just as templates. If you look at them, there's no real parameters in here. The serial number is blank. It's just giving you a head start for your programming. If you'll notice, zone one and two just show new. These are the hardwired zones. So when you're doing your programming of a wireless sensor, never try to use zone one or two. You'll see there's no serial number box. And if you get frustrated or confused about, hey, where do I put my serial number? It's because you're in the wrong zone. But once you skip and go down to a zone six or a zone seven or any other other further, further down zones, then you can program in your sensors. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and join and use number six because it's programmed already as a motion or at least starts, it's, it's got some head start on programming a motion. So you noticed we highlighted the zone six so it's blue and then we hit edit. And now we're in the zone programming screen for our 5800 PIR res. So the first thing we have to do is associate the serial number. And when we hit that, we have this nice screen here. You know, it look, you'll notice it looks a little different than the Lynx Touch. They have the nice uh, big buttons here. And what we wanna do is either activate the sensor three times or type in this seven digit serial number that's displayed on this sticker right here. Okay, this sticker also happens to be on the back plate. So Honeywell gives you two spots to access the serial number and you just have to either type it in or activate the sensor. To activate a motion sensor, the best way is to just insert the battery. You'll notice when you first insert the battery, it gives you a steady, well not a steady, but a, uh, you know, in sequence, a flashing red. And we're gonna let this kind of power up sequence go through its, th go through its thing. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute, and we'll see that this flashing red will stop and then it will only flash red when the motion grabs or picks up motion in the room. As this is a PIR, it's a passive infrared motion. It's working on the technology of looking for a change in passive infrared energy in the room. 
So that could be a change in temperature, uh, which a human body would look different than the ambient temperature in the room, and that's how this motion is working. And the dash RES portion of the part number just means it's a residential motion. So it's designed for residential applications. It's by far the most popular residential wireless motion that Honeywell offers. So uh, we're still waiting for this power-up sequence. This is uh, normalizing all of the passive infrared technology inside the, the unit as soon as we put that battery in. So we'll let it do its thing, and then we'll show you how to fault it and get it to auto-learn into our Lyric security system. All right, I just heard the click, and it finally has stopped. Now that we're fully, now that we're finally out of the mode where it was flashing at us um, in succession without moving, you can see it just grabbed me. And now that it's out of that mode, the actual activations are faulting the device. The first time it just beeped. The second time it beeped and it put beeped twice and it put the serial number and the loop number in. And the third time it beeped three times and it locked in those parameters. So that's the normal behavior you're looking for. The first fault or motion detection is uh, just to say, hey, I see it. The second fault beeps twice and puts the proper serial number and the proper loop number. And the third activation locks in the parameters and takes you back to the screen. All right. And this device will continue to show that red light when it grabs motion here for a 10 minute period. That's the walk test period. It's a great way to use the sensor up on the wall and walk throughout the room and make sure it's grabbing you in all spots. For our purposes, um, we don't really have to worry about that until we go to install it. So for this programming video, we just wanted to highlight how that programming works a lot better when you first install the battery right before you're ready to program. If you're outside of the walk test mode, then this, bat, then this motion to preserve battery life will go to sleep when it's faulted or, or detected motion in the disarm state. So when you're in the sleep mode, it sleeps for three minutes. So that would have took a total of nine, 10 minutes just to fault it three times if we were not in that walk test period. So again, it's a critical step is to take the, if you already have the battery in, take it out if you've never installed the motion yet, don't put the battery in till you're ready to program. Once you put the battery in, then you're in the mode where you can fault it um, and the LED shows up in that walk test mode without having to worry about it going to sleep. And you can get those three faults to lock in your parameters. So just like on a Lynx Touch programming, it's laid out very, very similarly. You'll notice that some of the screens, like this arm night option on the Lynx Touch used to be a down arrow. So with the, with the nicer uh, screen, they're able to fit it all on one page. So you have your serial number and your loop number. The serial number is the unique seven digit code that this unit uses to talk to this panel. Only a panel with this serial number programmed in would ever be able to hear anything or, or detect an alarm from this device. The loop number is set to number one. If you look in the installation guide for this 5800 PIR-RES, it'll say specifically to use loop number one. Uh, loop number is just a way to tell the system what action occurred when a device is activated. So some devices can do more than one thing. You can't have a serial number and the same loop number on more than one zone. Okay, but if you want a device that can do more than one action and be programmed to two different zones, you do it with the loop number. And the loop number will tell the system this action versus that action. In this case, it's only a one action device. It's loop number one. Zone descriptor one and two is used so that you can put in uh, clarifying words based on what this zone is beyond just a motion sensor. So if this is the only motion sensor in your whole house, you probably don't need any clarifying words. It doesn't matter if it's the living room or the dining room. You only know you, know you only have one motion and therefore all you need it to say is motion. It will say what's in the device type slot. So keep that in mind. The motion sensor here will be spoken on a chime or an alarm and it will display that on the zone uh, description whenever there's an event. So if it, you don't have to put motion in here and then, because other than otherwise, if you did, it would say motion twice. Okay, but if you have more than one motion, it's a way to say living room motion versus dining room motion. And to to put in the words, you don't just type it. 
you know, if you wanted to do living room, you could just hit L-I-V-I-N-G. If you thought that's how it's done, just be careful that there's a custom library available of words in the panel. And when you hit a letter, it's actually jumping to the first available word of the library for that particular letter. So you do L and it shows us all the L-A words. If we hit I, it'll jump to the top of the L-I words. And if we hit V, it'll go to living, the first L-I-V word. And from there, if we hit the down arrow, we can see that the next available L-I-V word is living room. And that's what we want. So we save that. So again, I mean, I told you you can't type it and just type, type every letter. Um, I'll show you. If you just do L-I-V-I-N-G, you can see it starts to get a little jumbled up. So as long as you do some pauses in between each letter, you certainly can type it. But again, you're not typing to put the whole word in. You're just typing to shortcut down through the library to get to the word that you want. And then you save it, and it's locked in. Living room motion sensor. And now the device will be described exactly where it's going to be. This will be installed in the living room, and the system knows it's the living room motion. So the next thing we want to look at is the response type. And when you highlight the response type, you're displayed on the screen with all of the options for a motion detector setup. So the system understands what someone would use a motion for in most cases, and it's going to limit the available response types that the panel offers to this eight choices because we chose device type motion. If we change this device type to uh, other, which is kind of the show me everything option, then you'll notice the response type box opens up a lot more response types. But because we are a motion, this is a shortcut, so we're not confused by zone types or response types that we wouldn't normally use with a motion. Okay, so if you had a custom motion, you can certainly use the device type other, unlocks all the options. But for most people, when you choose the motion, it's limiting you to the options that you would typically use with a motion. So because we're, this is a traditional motion, going to be used in a traditional manner, we want to just select one of the traditional response types. So interior follower versus interior with delay. We do have a video that goes into depth about these two response types because it is kind of confusing. But uh, the majority of motions will be set with interior follower. And what that means is it'll be an instant alarm when this device is triggered, okay? If someone uh, comes through the ceiling or smashes a window and climbs through without activating any other sensor, if this is the first sensor activated, it's an instant alarm, which is the most secure way to detect an intrusion. However, the follower portion of it tells you that if you enter a door, that's an entry exit door, a door that you would use when you come home, then the motion, if you're passing through the motion on the way to your Lyric system to disarm the system, instead of going into instant alarm and causing a false alarm, it will follow the delay that that door that you used was set to. So most doors are set with a 30 second entry delay if they're entry exit doors. So that would mean you have 30 seconds. Once you've opened the door, you can walk in front of this motion. This motion will be following the same 30 second delay. And as long as you disarm the system in time, there's no alarms. So again, interior follower is by far the most popular response type used with the 5800 PIR res. So that's what we're setting. And then the last questions we want to answer is alarm report, yes or no. Is your system monitored? That's the question. If it is, you want this sensor to report to the central station, you would say yes. If you're not monitored or if for some reason you had a particular sensor that you didn't want to send alarms to a central station, you could toggle it to be no. But really, you, if you're monitored and you want the sensor to be monitored, it needs to be yes. Chime is disabled. That is the default for motions. Um, because of the battery saver mode and the way that it goes to sleep, even if you had it on chime, it wouldn't chime reliably because you would expect it to chime every time you walk in front of it, but if it's sleeping, it won't chime. So most people don't want their motion to chime at them when they're in their house. Um, they only want their doors to chime to alert them that someone could be coming in. So most times you leave that disabled. You certainly can enable it, but we're going to just leave it disabled. Supervised is whether or not this sensor will send periodic check-in signals to the panel. 
and um, whether or not the panel will uh, alert us to any issues with the device checking in. So that's a way to know that the sensor is there, it's in range, and uh, the panel sees it. So we always recommend that your wireless uh, sensor devices are set with supervision so that you know if there's any issues in advance. And then the final question is arm night. And that's called night stay arming, or that's the feature that allows you to use night stay arming. So normally, when you arm to away mode, that means your doors, your windows, your glass breaks, and your motions are all active. Every type of sensor is active because you're away, you're out of the house. When you're in stay mode, when you arm it in stay mode, that means, hey, I'm in the house, okay? So my doors and my windows and my glass breaks, which are all perimeter type sensors should be active but because i'm walking throughout my house my interior sensors which is my motion interior follower that will be off all right but if i have a big house there might be times at night time that i can say i don't want my living room motion or my bedroom motion or my hallway motion on because i might get up i might go to the bathroom you know, I might turn the TV on if I can't sleep. So I might hit those motions at night. I want them off. But I know at nighttime, I will never go to my basement. So if this was a basement motion, you could set it with an arm night option. And when you arm to night stay mode, that particular motion would still be active, whereas the rest of the motions would be deactive. So that's just a cool way to give yourself a third type of arming to give you some motion protection in the mode of night stay, meaning no one should be in that area during that arming mode. In this case, it's a living room motion. We don't really want it to be used with night stay. We're gonna leave that no. And to lock in all of this good work we just did, we have to hit save. We can see now that instead of the generic template motion sensor zone, it's actually saying living room motion sensor. And if we exit out to the home screen now, we have this zone program. When we hit zones, we can see instead of just the temperature default zones, we now have a living room motion sensor zone. And it is sleeping right now, which is why we're not getting any faults. But if we waited three minutes and then waved our hand, we would get a not ready to arm sensor six living room motion fault. All right, so that is how you program a 5800 PIR dash RES wireless 5800 series motion to your Honeywell Lyric system. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on enrolling your 5800 PIR dash res, please email us support at alarmgrid.com and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you're kept up to date with all of the great new videos that we'll be releasing about this Honeywell Lyric system.